Today, we install a touchscreen on your Raspberry Pi for use with Octoprint. Adding a touchscreen to the top of your Raspberry Pi can make Octoprint really convenient to use. It's close to your printer already, so you don't have to go to a computer to control Octoprint. You can just do it all right there as one unit. Now, not all touchscreens are treated the same, so your mileage may vary, and definitely check out the reviews on the screens before you buy them. Now this tutorial I am using pretty much the cheapest screen you can get on Amazon. It's around $25 US. This is a 3.5 inch. But this tutorial should work for pretty much any screen, no matter what the size or the make, as long as the vendor has provided the drivers. That's one of the key points. Here's a look at the screen I'm going to be using for this video. Again, it's a very affordable screen, pretty much the cheapest one you can get, and it's a 3.5 inch. But this walkthrough should be pretty much the same for any screen that you can use one of these HDMI adapters on. And I highly recommend you get one that has the HDMI adapter if you can. The configuration is much easier. Also, make sure before you buy a screen that the vendor provides the drivers for Raspberry Pi for the screen. UC Tronics does, so we're in good shape here. So now I'll walk you through the steps of how to get your screen set up on your Pi. We'll jump in SSH, install the drivers for the screen, as well as Touch UI, which comes with a light desktop that allows you to use that screen. I do assume that you already have Octoprint up and running on your Raspberry Pi. If you don't know how to do that, you can check this video out up here, but mine is already working with my printer and my network. And as with any Raspberry Pi project, power is important. Make sure you have a 2.5 amp power supply or better to power your Pi and your screen, or your results are going to be very unpredictable. So let's start by putting this sandwich together. So here's what we're working with. We have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, a UC Tronic screen that I showed you earlier that I grabbed off of Amazon. It's around $25 US. It's 3.5 inch. And an HDMI to HDMI adapter to allow us to connect up to the Pi from the screen output. It just connects from the screen to the Pi in a U-shape. So the screen is just designed to be used as a hat. It sits right on top of the Raspberry Pi and you utilize the GPIO pins. The screen does come with some heat sinks for the chips on the board and or the screen if you'd like to use them. I don't intend to leave this configured, so I'm not going to use them on my project, but you might want to if you're experiencing issues on your setup. So this fits right on top of the GPIO pins. These go in the very corner towards the SD card, the 5 volt pins. So it sets on here just like this. You can see from the side that these four pins are on the very corner of the GPIO rail. It utilizes all four pins. And you know it's connected correctly because it pretty much matches the same size as the Pi, but also the HDMI ports are lined up. And then you can plug in your HDMI adapter. It just fits into both ports. This is how the screen actually gets its video feed, just like so. Now we can go ahead and power up the Pi, and this will power up the screen. It's probably going to flicker a few times, but you won't have any output quite yet. If it's upside down, on this screen, there's a button right here that you can flip it to whichever direction you'd like. You'll see the boot up here in command line. Eventually, it'll come into a login screen, but that's all you'll get. You can use the console from here, but it's quite small, and you probably don't want to. So we're going to open up Putty, and we're going to log into our Raspberry Pi with SSH. Now, if you only have one of these on your network, you can use octopi.local to connect to your Pi. You don't have to know the IP. I have more than one of these on the network right now, so I have to use the IP directly, but you probably won't have to. We'll log in. Default username is Pi. Password, Raspberry. Since we're already doing Raspberry Pi stuff with Octoprint, let's just walk through a couple of things while we're here. If you do a D space F dash H, that's going to show you the sizes of your file system and how much is being used. At one time, it was pretty useful to expand your file system using the Raspi config. I don't know if that's any longer needed, but we can go ahead and give it a try. Maybe it's useful for others. If you do sudo raspi dash config, this is going to take you into a menu to help you configure your Raspberry Pi. You do need your sudo password, which is also Raspberry. You can go down to advanced options. You can expand your file system with A1. It's going to resize the root partition using any extra space that might have been left over during the Octoprint install. Again, I don't think this is really useful anymore, but it comes in the directions with a lot of these screens, so I thought I'd go ahead and run through it for you. Just hit OK. You do have to reboot your Pi to get that change to take effect. We'll go ahead and hit Finish. It's going to ask you if you want to reboot. Let's go ahead and tell it yes. Let's go ahead and log back in. 
if you do a DF space minus H again, you're going to see it changed a few things around. I'm not sure that it helped you out at all, but that's what they're talking about when you see this configuration when you expand the micro SD card in some of these instructions. Next step, as with a lot of Linux installs, it's a good idea to go ahead and update and upgrade any packages that you have. So do sudo apt-git update. This is going to update all the repositories. And after that's complete, we can do a sudo apt-git upgrade. This is a list of all the new packages that will be installed. You can do a Y enter or just hit enter as the default for yes. After the upgrades are complete, they take about 20 to 30 minutes depending on how many you have. It's a great time to reboot to pull in any changes. sudo reboot now. Let's go ahead and log back in. Now let's take a look at the directions that the vendor of the screen gave me to set up the drivers for the screen. This vendor gave me some documentation with a URL that I can copy and paste the commands for loading the driver software. Definitely check this out before you buy the screen. If they didn't give you some sort of page like this, it's probably a bad sign and you should stay away from that screen. Also, you might want to consider downloading this or making a copy of this website just in case it goes away in the future so you don't lose all the information for your screen. So we've already done our Raspberry config and we've done our update. Now we're going to use git to bring in the driver software using a clone command. So let's copy this whole line. Back to putty and ssh, we'll paste this in and it's going to download the driver software from GitHub. It threw an error because they put sudo on the git clone command. You should not have to use sudo for git, and I didn't remember that. So let's go ahead and just use git clone without sudo. So since we did that git clone in our home directory, let's go ahead and do an ls to view what it's in there. Now we have this uctronics directory that we need to get into, so we'll cd into that. And we'll do another ls to see what's in there. These are all the install and driver files we'll need. We need to change the permissions on some of these using chmod. So we'll do sudo chmod 777 so everyone can access it. And we're going to do uctronics underscore hdmi underscore backup. We we'll use the up arrow to bring that command back up. And we're going to change uctronics underscore hdmi install. And one more time, we'll do uctronics underscore hdmi underscore restore. If you do an ls again, all the items that are now in green, that tells you that that permission has been changed to 777. Now we're going to issue the uctronics backup utility to backup our current configuration. So we'll do sudo dot forward slash uctronics underscore hdmi backup. We'll hit enter. That'll run the backup script. And then after the backup's complete, we can go ahead and run the install. sudo dot forward slash uctronics underscore hdmi underscore install and this will install the drivers from scratch when that install is complete it automatically reboots the Pi if you check out the screen as it's coming up after that reboot you'll see that everything has gotten a lot bigger the resolution has changed on the screen that means the drivers are working so that gets the drivers installed and the screen up and running for the Raspberry Pi it changed resolution over to the touch screen so we know it's going to work now there are a few other tools that came with my screen, like a calibration tool and an on-screen keyboard, but with the Touch UI software, we shouldn't need those things. So now we'll install the Touch UI part that lets us use Octoprint. So let's go ahead and open up our Octoprint instance from a browser. Again, you can use octopi.local. I have to use the IP number. And then we'll head into settings. Now is a great time to update Octoprint if you haven't already to the newest version, just to make sure everything is working as expected. You can go to software update and update it from here. Just hit check for updates now. I'm already at the current version, so I should be good. Let's head into plugin manager. We're going to hit get more. Then we're going to search for touch UI. It's right here. Go ahead and hit install. When the install is done, you can go ahead and hit restart now over here. And that's enough to get the touch UI plugin installed. You can see it right up here. What it does by default is sense the size of your screen. So if you open a browser window and you go to your Octoprint instance on your phone, it will see that that phone screen is smaller and switch to the Touch UI, which is a lot blockier, simpler interface that you can use with a touch screen. And that's all fine and good if you're using a device that already has an OS and a browser already, but that's not going to work for a touch screen. We don't have a desktop environment. So the creators of Touch UI have made a light desktop environment that we can install just for this purpose. So let's close this and let's head out to the Touch UI GitHub page. 
Touch UI is a great plugin altogether. Paul has done a really great job with this, but he's gone one step further to make this desktop environment. You can kind of see what Touch UI is all about here on the GitHub page. And down here under Setup, there's a Read More for touch screens. And what we want to be able to do is boot to browser. So every time the Pi comes up on that touch screen, it's going to open up that light version of browser so we can use the Touch UI plugin. So let's head to that page. And he couldn't have made this any easier. All you have to do is install the plugin like we just did. Make sure your screen drivers are working. We've already done that. And then download from Git this Touch UI auto start package. So we'll just copy this command, head back to SSH, and we'll paste it in. No need to change directories even because it's going to put it in the home directory under Touch UI dash auto start. And the download from GitHub's complete. We can go back to the GitHub page. All we have to do is run the install script. Copy this command right here, and we'll paste it in SSH. Now this does take a little while because it's installing a desktop basically, but once it's done, it'll come up with Touch UI on that touch screen. During the install, it's going to ask you for a user that can auto log in to Octoprint when your Touch UI boots up. You can do this if you'd like. If you'd like to try to use the touch screen to log in your user ID, you can do that too but I'm going to let it auto log me in. So I'm just going to use my username, Chris, and hit OK. It wants to know if it can restart Octoprint. Yes, it can. And if the install looks like it's hung up at any time, I've had it stop on certain phases, you can usually just hit enter to get it to continue. The install's complete, and now the Touch UI screen is booting up. Now the first time through, the auto login might not work. That's configured in your config.yaml file. So let's change directory to home, you can do that using the tilde. We'll change directory into .octoprint. And let's just take a look at the config YAML file. cat config.yaml. And the install did successfully add in the auto login local and auto login as. But I've had issues with this in the past that if you don't tell it what network you're logging in from, it won't allow you to do it. So let's go ahead and edit the config YAML file. sudo nano config.yaml. And underneath auto login as, We'll add a space, and we're going to add an entry for local networks. Local, capital N, networks. And then colon after that, and then underneath that line, we want to do a dash, then space, and in quotes, we're going to add the local host network. So 127.0.0.1 forward slash 8. And then we need a line underneath that, where we put in a dash, space, and in quotes, we need to do colon colon one forward slash 128. Basically, this is telling it that it's okay to log in as Chris if you're coming from the local host or the networks inside the Raspberry Pi, not from external. So this should fix the issue. We can go ahead and hit control X, Y for yes, and then hit enter to save. And let's go ahead and reboot one more time. Sudo reboot now. And then we can check it out. You can see they're flashing red over here. That's telling me that my printer isn't connected. That's because I don't have a printer connected. Now I am going to use the stylus to test this, but that's only because I'm roughly two inches away from the camera. Your finger should work just fine as well. But if you're not familiar with Touch UI, you can go to this tab up here. That's going to give you the temperatures. This tab is for your controls, and your webcam tab is right there. Your files are over here, down in here. And then all the rest of your settings are going to be over here in this area. It's all the same Octoprint stuff, just condensed. And there you go. If you print yourself a case for this, you're going to have a nice compact touchscreen environment you can use right next to your 3D printer to help you control it. Again, I like the HDMI connected screens better than the SPI ones. They both work kind of the same way, but I think the HDMI is a lot easier to configure. Also, before you buy a screen, make sure you're okay with the size of that screen and it's not too small for your environment. Read the reviews on those screens, make sure other users are having good results, and 100% make sure that it has drivers available for Raspberry Pi. A big thanks to Paul for creating the Touch UI on all the work he's done, and of course Gina with Octoprint. It's a great tool and it makes 3D printing even better. I hope you liked this video or you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.